Hi friends, my name is Natras. In this video, I am going to talk about most important object of advanced application development that is thread local, thread local. So, it is introduced from JDK 1.4, but generic support is added from JDK 1.5. So, that means from JDK 1.5, we can start working with generics to avoid typecasting related problem to make this object as a type safety object, we can start working with the generics from what JDK 1.5 onwards. So, let us try to understand what is need of this object. Generally, a question rises in the interview, what is that? In how many scopes we can maintain data in Java? scopes of data in Java. There are multiple scopes, but popular scopes are what? Local scope. When you declare variable, when you declare object inside the method, that becomes what? Local scope. Next, instance scope. When you declare object as the instance variable of a class, then it becomes what? Object scope or instance scope. Next, class scope. When you declare variable or object as static member variable of a class, then it becomes what? Class scope because all the objects created for that class are directly by using class, we can access that object or by using various objects created for that class, you can access that member variable or what object. But one more scope I want to talk, what is that thread local scope? It is specific to each thread. This object scope is what? Specific to each thread, especially in framework based programming. If you want to maintain data specific to each thread having global visibility or local visibility, then we try to place that object or that data in thread local, specific to each thread. Thread 1 keeps some data in thread local object, only thread 1 can access it, no one can access it. If you provide global visibility to that uh, thread local object, yes, whatever data you place inside the thread local object will also get global visibility. If you provide local visibility to that thread local object, whatever data that is there inside thread local object will get local visibility. But the thread who has placed that data, only that thread can come and access the data. Other threads cannot access the data. So, once again I repeat the scopes, in Java we can maintain data in four scopes, one is local scope, generally method scope, when you take a object as a local variable to method or local variable of method, it becomes local scope, in a stand scope, when you take object or variable as what? non-static member variable in a class, then it becomes object scope or instance scope. Class scope, when you take object or variable as what? Static variable of a class, it becomes what? Class scope because by using class name, by using various objects of that class, we can access that variable or what? Object. Thread local, okay, specific to each thread. Thread local scope. It is a new scope. In a, in a, it will not be used regularly, it will be used in a specific situations. For example, whenever user logins, one thread will be created. Let us assume, user logins, one thread will be created. Username password that is given by user, I want to store specific to that thread. As long as that thread is continuing execution, I want to make data visible. Once thread is gone, data should gone. But thread may use that data again and again in multiple places. So, it is better to preserve that username password in thread local object. It is something like this. Let us feel this is our thread local object. Let us assume this is my thread T1. thread local object allows to keep only one object per thread. 
it does not allow to keep multiple object for each thread here. Thread 1, one object. Thread 2, one object. Thread 3, one object. Thread 10, one object. If you want to place multiple values, try to keep all the values into single object and place what specific to each thread. So, let us assume this has placed T1 here. What is this? Object 1. T1 here, object 1. Now, I am in taking one more thread, thread 2. Object 2. So, this is my thread 2. Thread 2, T2. Thread 1 has placed object 1. Thread 2 has placed object 2. If thread 2 try to access object 1, it won't be given. Because I said na, local to each thread, specific to each thread. If thread 2 wants to access object 1, it won't be given. If thread 1 wants to access object 2, it won't be given. For example, to set the data, it calls what? Set method. Set object 1. Again, it calls what method? Set object 1. Similarly, to get the data, who is doing this work? Thread 1. Thread 1, what is this? T1. So, it simply gives me object 1. So, again, what is this? Thread T2, it gives me what? Object 2. By using set method, any thread can keep its data to thread local object. By using what? Get method. When you call get method, that data can be accessed. Here also what method here? Get method. In thread local object, I kept object 1, object 2 as the data of thread 1, thread 2. But whenever thread 1 comes back, asks for object, it will give only object 1 because it has maintained object 1 specific to thread 1. When thread 2 comes back, ask for object, it will give what? Object 2 only. In any cost, thread 1 cannot access what? Object 2. Thread 2 cannot access what? Object 1. That means, thread local object is maintaining data specific to each thread. Indirectly, it is made maintaining data as what? Thread safe. See, every object is specific to one thread. So, indirectly what? We got thread safety or not? So, one more angle I can present it. Without using synchronization, if you want to provide thread safety to the object, place those objects in what? Thread local. Thread 1, object 1. So, no other thread can access that object. No other thread can act on that object. Thread 2, object 2. No other thread can act on it. So, indirectly what is happening? Without using synchronization, if you want to make object as thread safe object, definitely what? We can think about keeping in what? Thread local object. If only one thread is acting on the object and not allowing other threads simultaneously to act on the object, then definitely we can say that object is what? Thread safe object. So, if you place object 1 in thread local object by thread 1, only thread 1 can come and access that object. It does not allow other threads to come and act on that object at any cost. So, indirectly object 1 has become thread safe or not. In real practices, when you are developing web application, for multiple requests, multiple threads will be created in Java based web application. In that situation, if you want to make data specific to each thread or each request, you may think about placing in what? Thread local object. Fine, we will uh, see in uh, next video where exactly it will be used in what? Framework based application development, in spring based application development, or what? Hibernate based application development. Let me dedicate this video only to talk fundamentals of what? Thread local. So, the final conclusion is you want to have data scope as what? Thread scope, local to each thread, thread scope. Then you can go for what? Thread local. Thread local scope is also called as what? Thread scope. Then how to create this thread local? As I said from Java 1.5 onwards, there is a support for what? Generic. So, we can take the support of generics. Thread local, thread local is equal to thread local, thread local. 
suppose you want to allow only integer vapor class objects you write integer is equal to null so let me initialize it thread local is equal to new thread local of new thread local integer to set data let's go for thread local dot set 1001 or yeah because of auto boxing this 1001 will be converted into what integer vapor class object so we need not to bother about it thread local dot set new integer of 1001 both are one and the same from JDK 1.5 onwards auto boxing feature is introduced so that's why there is no need of you explicitly converting simple value into vapor class object it automatically converted for example this code is executed by thread t1 so it will take 1001 and keeps in what thread local object as integer vapor class object against thread t1 and no other thread can access it only thread t1 can come and access that data that means the data has become specific to thread t1 or not yes to get the data how to get the data from thread local int val is equal to integer let us assume this method is called by thread t1 yes it will return what 1001 this method is called by thread t2 sorry it will return what null value or error may come why because we are assuming this entire set method is called by whom thread t1 so only when t1 thread comes and ask data from thread local it will be given if any other thread comes and ask for this data it will not be given suppose if you want to modify to modify data thread local dot set 2000 it will simply modify okay if uh, thread t1 comes and says i want to modify the data yes definitely it allows us to modify existing value to 2000 to remove data thread local dot remove of thread t1 calls this method thread local dot remove it removes what object from thread local if any other thread calls it cannot move remove what data from what thread local sir tell me whether this 1001 value okay 2000 value global or local that depends upon where we created thread local object if we create thread local object as a instance variable in a class object scope class variable i mean it's a static variable okay class scope inside the method method scope that is not important what is most important here is it will be having that regular visibility or uh, scope along with that more important it is specific to what thread so thread one has kept data in thread local object and only thread one can come and access that data it does not allow other thread to come and access data because of generics we can avoid type castings while placing the data or while re removing retrieving the data that is the advantage of generics as I said generics support is introduced for a thread local from JDK 1.5 if you observe all these things thoroughly and effectively I can say one thing every thread local is internally one hash map here the data whatever we see in thread local it is internally maintained in what hash map how can we say this very simple you observe very carefully in the hash map keys are there how it will be maintained simple the thread names will act as what keys and the object will act as what values thread t2 object 2 dot 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 that's why observe very carefully keys are these values are this that's it so thread t1 object 1 3 2 object 2 thread 1 has come kept object 1 in thread local t1 becomes key t object 1 becomes what value thread 2 has come kept data in what thread local object again in t2 becomes key and object 2 becomes what value what is the advantage of it what is the advantage of it in which angle it is advantage very simple and straightforward in the hash map keys cannot be duplicated 
but the values can be duplicated. So, that is why uh, against each thread only one object can be placed and when we supply thread name only we will get the object name. So, due to this what happened here each object has become specific to one thread or not keys cannot be duplicated that means one thread can have only one value and by supplying thread name we can get the object name. When uh, thread local dot get method is called it will take the current thread name and collects the object name. When thread local dot set method name is called it will take current thread name become makes it as a key and whatever argument you pass whatever object you passed as the argument of set method that becomes what key. When thread local dot remove method is called so it takes the current thread name searches whether that uh, uh, thread name is there in the uh, in the hash map as key or not if there it, it, it based on the t it, it deletes it. So, ultimately uh, thread local is indirectly or directly maintains data in the form of what hash map that is the reason we get the feeling ok uh, data is specific to what thread local. So, this is about uh, thread local and uh, uh, it is uh, programming practices. So, in uh, next video I am going to talk about how exactly thread local will be utilized hibernate related logics development. Thank you.